Well, hello, hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to Liverpool. It's great to be here in Liverpool, a, a true fighting city, uh, and a very warm welcome to viewers joining us across TNT Sports and Queensbury social media feeds. Now, Liverpool is a city that has been crying out for, for a new boxing hero. We feel like we've got that man here. He is a mini Mike Tyson. He's the unbeaten WBA world featherweight champion. Liverpool, you have your new hero. His name is Nick Ball, and he's coming home October the 5th, making the first defence of his featherweight crown against Ronnie Rios. Now, Ronnie Rios is a man who is still waiting for his crowning moment, but believes that that moment will come on October 5th. He's coming to take everything that Nick Ball has. It's a brilliant main event, and uh, as you can see from this, this table here, it's a brilliant undercard as well. British and Commonwealth title fights, and fighters very much on the up. Delighted to be in the company of the man who is, once again, making it all happen, bringing big-time boxing back to Liverpool, Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. And Frank, just a... Uh, yeah, great to be back in Liverpool, right? What a brilliant show, October the 5th. It is. Uh, I think this is our first... Uh, fight back since 2016, so it's a long, long time ago when Liam Smith made the first defence of his title here. And I think it's the first time since 2019 there's been a male world title fight. So it's a long time, so five years. And the man here, the best featherweight in the world, he's here and he's going to show everybody what he's back about, making his homecoming after two magnificent, magnificent performances of the, in the Riyadh season. And there's back-to-back -back fights in, what, over 10 weeks, was it? Roughly yeah. 10 weeks. Yeah. I mean, at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Got robbed in the first one, but done the business in the second one and got rightly got the decision. And uh, he's back with his, and his fans in here. And, we're and what we're going to do here, and this is what we're really working hard with, this dearth of talent that's in the North West, is, and you see all the, some of the guys sitting here at the ta table, is uh, to try and make this more regularly, build it like we did many years ago when we did the in Manchester, when Manchester was a bit skinny on the ground as far as big shows are concerned. And what we've done over the last few years in building up in the Midlands again with the Magnificent Seven shows and so forth. And that's, that's um, really come alive. And we want to make the same thing to happen here. And with this young talent, as I say, a lot of them are here, we're going to do it, no doubt about it. We'll go for all the uh, all the fights individually, but just your opening thoughts on the on the main event, Frank Nick Ball, first defence of his title against Ronnie Rios, who is hungry and very much coming to fight. Well, he's going to have to come to fight. He's going to have to be hungry because I just said he's in with the best featherweight in the world, and uh, we got. Re I certainly got a lot of respect for Ronnie and his team and Chris and and Co. They're, you know, this is uh, they have a great opportunity, but you know what? He's going to have his hands full because this. This, this young guy, he's, I, I can't tell you how much admiration I've got for him as a fighter. He's pure excitement. I can't think as many fighters in the world are as exciting as Nick Ball. When he gets in that ring, it's like action. Bell goes and it's just non-stop action. I don't know how, where he gets the energy from. <laughs> I, think, um, I think Paul must feed him on Duracell batteries or something <laughs> because he just keeps going and keeps going. And it's... Uh, and it's a pleasure to watch. And if Desire wins fights, he's going to reign for a long, long time. So, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie's here. He's not here to make up the numbers. I'm sure you'll hear from him in a moment. But he's going to have his hands full. He's going to know he's been in a fight, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, as you can see from this top table, it's a, it's a brilliant card. This fight is at different stages of their journey. And we're going to begin with Joe Cooper. <laughs> Just 18 years old, this is fight number two for you. You had your debut a couple of months ago back in Belfast and I, I think you, uh, you really caught the imagination with just how seasoned you looked in there. Uh, how much are you looking forward to getting out in Liverpool uh, on this big show? Uh, yeah, looking forward to it now, Dev. Um, we had a few come out to Belfast, but we'll get, get a lot more out in Liverpool. Should be a good night, definitely. And you're, you're the... Um... I hope I've done my research. You're the cousin of Billy Joe Saunders, right? Yeah. So you're just... I mean, this is just fighting blood. You, you're you born to do this. Yeah, well, all, all of my family box. So, yeah, we're def definitely bred in us, 100%. I heard you say that after that debut fight that actually you didn't have any nerves. You, surely you had some nerves. A little few in the changing room, <laughs> but once I got out to the ring, well, generally the nerves disappeared. Once I got in the ring, there was no nerves, so I was happy about that. I was more nervous 
what, in, in the amateurs? Do you know, I've been, I've been watching some interviews of you because we're, we're at this stage now, so you're, you're 18. I've seen Coogan Cassius of IFL doing interviews with you like when you were 13 yeah, years old yeah, and coming through and, and whatnot. Tender, yeah. Does it feel a bit surreal that you're up here now on yeah, the big do. stage? Yeah, it do. Feels, it's, been, it's, been it's been a long journey, but we're here now and we're just, just getting started. And what can we expect from you on, the, on this big show? Um, going, for, going for the stoppage this time. Going for the stoppage or a knockout, 100%. Frank, uh, Joe Cooper, uh, fighter that you've been talking about and had your eye on for a little while. Fight number two for him coming up. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's, he's, Joe Senior and when I've been talking for a couple, we were talking for a couple of years, and we sponsored him for a while. And uh, the eye is always when he was old enough, he turned pro of us. And he's, uh, I thought it was a very mature performance for a debut. He'd done well, and it was good to see. And he was in with a, with somebody who, who you know, weren't coming to make up the numbers. He done well and uh, started his journey, and uh, it, this is all about his education now. And he's got to go out and do the business, which I know he will do, and uh, keep moving forward. Definitely, and uh, best of luck to you, Joe. We're looking forward to fight number two for you. Um, speaking of mature performances on a debut, there was another one in Belfast a couple of months ago, and it's a, a surname that you'll all certainly be familiar with. Walter Fury had his debut, and now it's fight number two for him. Uh, Walter, let, let me bring you in here. You are the son of the late Huey. Of course, he was Tyson's uncle, your father. Um, and finally, now your career yourself is underway. How, how does it feel to be up here as part of these big shows? Well, for a start off, I want to thank Frank for getting me on such a show. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a dream come true, definitely. Uh, I enjoyed the first one. I trained very hard for that. And this time, I've trained even harder. And this time, I'll be putting on a better performance and seeing a better, me a better self of myself. Well, in fight number one, I mean, the guy that you're in with, he could barely even lay a glove on you. It, it, was, it didn't look like a professional debut. It looked like you'd been boxing a long, long time as a pro. Yeah, I've done boxing since I was a little lad. It's nothing new. There is no pressure. Uh, I'm just taking step by step. I like so I'll keep improving each fight. This fight, they'll see a big difference in me. I've been working on a lot of things, what I can do better. <coughs> And, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And that must have been a special moment for you to, uh, to finally make your pro debut. I know uh, very much it was your father that got you into boxing all those years ago. You had a little bit of time away, but you're back with it now and doing him proud. Most definitely, yeah. Uh, I could be in a better place right now. Uh, I know I'm making him proud. It's something he loved. Uh, like I said, I've been fetched up in the boxing all my life. I've got, as you know, Tyson as my cousin. I've got two older brothers what was professional boxers. Yeah, I've been around it for a long time. It's time to just uh, do what's best for myself and show them what I'm made of. I've been watching your Instagram. You've been going on, on runs with Tyson as well. You've been training with him. How much of an influence on you has Tyson Fury been? Uh, listen, big thanks to Tyson, because he's helped me along the way as well. Uh, but like I said, he can't help you when you get in the ring. It's down to myself to do what you've got to do in boxing. But, yeah, uh, I appreciate um, the family I've got around me for what they do for me, most definitely. Frank, let me bring you in here. It's uh, another fury on, on the roster. I mean, we know that talent just sort of runs through their veins. It was an impressive debut a couple of months back too. Yeah, the fighting furies. Yeah, Walter done a, you know, he done a good job. And he, I mean, it's excellent boxing performance and uh, again, started his journey. And I'm looking forward uh, to the fifth and seeing him again in the ring. Again, ring. And I, I believe he will go places. And that's why he's with us, because if we didn't, we wouldn't be signing him. And uh, you know, he's a really nice guy. His dad was a lovely fella. His late father, God bless him. He was a lovely fella, and uh, he'll do him proud. I know that. Lovely words. Best of luck to you, Walter. Thank you. Uh, that's fight number two for Walter Fury coming up on this fantastic October 5th Liverpool show. Uh, Bomber Brown, uh, a little bit of heavyweight action. Bomber Brown, fight number five for you. Uh, you've been in that camp. You've made yourself at home in Liverpool, part of the Everton Red Triangle camp. You must be excited to be part of the big show with, with all, of your, all of your mates from the gym. Yeah, man, I'm excited and thankful for the, for the opportunity and can't wait to put on a good performance. Well, this is your chance to do that, right? This is the this is the big stage. This will be, I think, probably the biggest show that you have performed on so far. Um, 
Any nerves? Is there kind of more pressure to make sure you make a big statement? No, nah, not really. I just want to go out, enjoy it. Um, I'm sure everyone will enjoy it. My performance, definitely. You looking to make some noise in this heavyweight division? 100%. What's Bomber Brown all about? Knocking people out, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, man. How's it going training up there? I mean, it's kind of like a, a nod to Paul Stevenson, really. Paul Stevenson has got fighters in all different shapes and sizes, with all different styles, and seems to do very well out of these guys. How, how, how have you found working up there with, with, with all of these smaller gentlemen? Yeah, it's good, you know. Paul really, really pushes me in the gym. Same with Anna as well. Um, I'm learning not just off Paul and that, but off of the lads as well. So, yeah, it's good for me. It's good. Frank, let's, uh, you know, a, a brilliant show with a heavyweight attraction on there as well. Always adds a little bit of spice, right? Yeah, I mean, we want to get Bomber boxing more regularly. Part of that's been my fault, but he will be. He's a fellow, fellow gunner. He should change his name to Gunner Brown. But um, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's done everything that's been asked of him. And, and he's, he's in with a good trainer, good manager, good camp. And I'm sure they'll get the best out of him and he'll perform. He'll do the business on the night. He's undefeated. He is indeed. Bomber, fight number five for you. Best of luck to you coming up October the 5th. Nice and OK, let's speak to James McGiven, brand new signing for Queensbury. Hello, James. How are you? Not too bad, lads. Thanks for having me. Well, I mean, you've, you've earned it, mate. We, we, you saw you in Belfast back in June, and that knockout that you scored is one of the best knockouts that I've ever seen. I guess that a signature with Queensbury was inevitable after that. Um, yeah, I've said that that show in Belfast was an audition for me for Queensbury. It was, if I performed well, I could really progress my career and change my life, and I feel like that knockout was, it wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> it wasn't too bad at all. For anyone that hasn't seen it, I encourage you to go and watch it. As James says, it wasn't too bad. I think it's. I think you'll really enjoy it. But um, first fight now as a Queensbury fighter, as a backed fighter. How does that feel? Um, I said it in one of my posts earlier. I'm, I'm actually quite proud of it. You know, it's saying I'm a Queensbury is massive. It's Queensbury is one of them promotions that you dream of whenever you're just a kid and you start fighting. And obviously, coming from Belfast, Card Frampton was he was a superstar back home and he used to Queensbury and helped me getting in contact with the Warrens and Queensbury. So again, I'm just proud of where I've got to now. And your manager Jay Quigley, I've seen the in the front row there as well. He's been banging the drum for you for a little while. What's the plan here? How far can you go? What's the plan, James? Yeah, listen, we've been banging the drum. I've been doing this a long time now. I've, as an amateur I had a, a pretty good amateur career and now as a pro it's gonna be my tenth fight. Uh, the word's my oyster. Coming from a fighting city with fighting fans, I feel like I keep doing what I'm doing and keep progressing the way I'm progressing. There's nothing's going to stop me. Well, Frank, he, uh, James McGiven here must have certainly impressed you. I guess after that knockout, it was uh, it was inevitable, right, that he signed signed See, with us. I, I, I've got to tell you, it was an unbelievable knockout, and it was a uh, make sure get that signature. We wanted him on board with us. And I'm delighted he's on board. He's an exciting fighter, got a good, really good winning record. And uh, again, here go from strength to strength, and we'll get behind him and make sure that happens. Absolutely. Best of luck to you, James. You. Let's speak to the man sat next to you, Brad Strand. Uh, Brad, again, you know you're you're Liverpool through and through, and now you get the chance to perform on a big show in Liverpool. And I guess for you, this is about coming back and showing everyone what you're about. Yeah, definitely. Dev, uh, I haven't boxed in Liverpool since like 2019. Obviously, being in like Telford and York Hall, so I made up to be back in my home city. You know, a few of the fans can get down. It'll be a good night. It's a big night for for the gym as well, really, isn't it? I mean, this is probably the sort of night that you guys have, have sat around and, and talked about over the years. If we were all on the same show together up in Liverpool, I'd do it at the MS Bank Arena. You've probably talked about this sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. To Belter, to be honest, with all the lads and um, obviously. Thanks to Frank for putting it on, but also we've, we've got Nick to thank for that because without him, there's no big show like this in Liverpool, is the show? It's a belter. So, what, what are you, what sort of statement are you looking to make? Obviously, this is your first fight since your fight with Dennis McCann, uh, and this is, is this about showing everyone that you are very much at that level? And I don't know, it wasn't you in there, you, you tell me. Yeah, that's it, obviously. It, pff, it bad nights at the office when I feel like I just didn't shine, didn't show everyone. What I, what I can do, so 
you know, it's on me now just to show you all actually how good I am. So obviously I've, I've been ready for months. I, w I would have fought in the summer, but you know, uh, I just want to get back in there and show everyone. I don't think there's a, an opponent listed for you at the moment. Anyone you want to call out? Nah, I'm not calling anyone else on an eight round. <laughs> they no. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try. Um, Frank, the uh, the return uh, of Brad Strand, still, you know, one of the most talented super bantamweights out there. He is, and, uh, you know, a, a loss is not the end of the world. You see that weekend with Denzel. And, you know, you see it with... Uh, with Daniel Dubois. You know, it's not the... It's, it, that's about the character. That's about you coming back. That's showing everybody what you're all about. Learn from it. Come back. Make yourself be stronger. And he's more than capable of doing that. He's a good fighter. And I'm not going to say the same thing about the camp again, but then he's in a... He's in a good place and they'll get the best out of him. And he, you know, and he wants it. And if he really wants it, he can do it. Best of luck to you, Brad Strand. Great to, great to have you back on such a big show. Uh, so we've got a couple of British and Commonwealth title fights that you're going to really, really enjoy. Two unbeaten super lightweights. Let's talk about Henry Turner against Jack Rafferty. British, Commonwealth and WBC International Silver Super Lightweight Championships on the line. And I'll start with... Jack Rafferty, um, you dropped down from welterweight to super lightweight a couple of years ago because you were looking for opportunities. You felt like this was a division that you could make some noise in. Well, here's the opportunity. Here's Henry Turner. Here's a British title on the line. Tell us how you feel. Yeah, it's a massive fight. You know, I'm massively grateful of being here. He's got a piece of silverware. I've got a piece of silverware, and there's a piece of gold in between us. Um, two proud unbeaten British lads fighting for the British title. I've got my opportunity here. They wanted the British title shot. I want Fuster whose name it was and, you know, I've got it and I'm, uh, I'm happy I'm here. What do you think of Henry Turner? I think he's a great fighter. You know, he carries, carries power, power in both hands like myself, so I think it's going to make a cracking fight. I've heard you say, you know, you, you've been boxing very much on the small hall so far. You've been waiting for that opportunity to come. I've heard you say that once you get your TV slot, you will keep your TV slot. That will be you. Tell us more about that. Yeah. Um, I've, it's probably... When I get in that ring, it would have been 18 years since I first started punching a bag. Um, you know, 18 years later, I've got a massive shot. I'm going to take this opportunity with both hands, um, winning this British, beating Henry Turner, and uh, maybe winner stays on, and, you know, I'll be, I'll be wanting to, you know, keep these massive shows ahead of me. Your nickname, I understand, according to BoxRec anyway, is the Demolition Man. Are you going to demolish Henry Turner, October 5th? Is that the plan, Jack? Yeah, it's definitely... Listen, I, I, the boxing does itself, the fighting does itself. Um, they just end up on the floor at the end of the fight, unfortunately, so it, it is what it is. Well, let's bring in Henry Turner. Uh, Henry, this is... Uh, you know, you've been talking about getting a British title fight. You've got it. However, the man in, in your way is uh, the demolition man. He's unbeaten, he knocks people out. Give us your thoughts. No, I think it's a great fight, like you say, like Jack said. It's a 50-50, both unbeaten fighters. Jack, 23-0, me, 13-0. Like you say, we've both been doing this since we were kids. It's a massive fight and I'm looking forward to it. They don't call me the showman for nothing, don't worry about that. Well, you've got a bit of power yourself, Henry. It's, uh, it started happening the last few fights, I think you've stopped like three of your last four or four of your last fight. There's a bit of a power surge as you've got maturer, I guess. Do you feel like you can actually do a demolition job on the demolition man? You need to do your research, Dev. Go on. It's five of the last six. Even better, even better. Can you say the thing about doing the demolition job on Jack? Oh, we'll, we'll see. I think I've got all the tools in my box to beat him, so whatever way I want it to go, I'll go. I've heard you say you never really watch your opponent, and you normally just figure it out in a round. Do you think you can figure him out in a round? Like you say, I've got a great team around me. I let them do the watching. I can adapt to anything. I've been, I've been around boxing for all, all my life, pretty much. I've been to the Europeans, won gold medals. I've been seven-time national champion. I'm unbeaten as a pro. I've barely lost a round as a pro. So, yeah, I think I can adapt to anything. Jack, let me just get your, uh, your response to that. I mean, he's... You know, he's, he's very, very good. People have barely laid a glove on him. Yeah, I don't think he's come across a Jack Rafferty. And, like, I think this is the, the hardest fight I've had. This is the hardest fight he's had, you know. 
this is it's it, it's uh, all big good fighters. Uh, it's going to make a cracking fight. What is it that you do better than Henry Turner? I think my momentum um, and my age will uh, come a massive part in this. Henry, what do you do better than Jack? I think my skill. I think I'm just as powerful. I think I'm a better boxer. I think you're, I'll show everyone on the night how good Emery Turner is. Do you have a message for Jack Rafferty? Just looking down the table there. There's no message. Like you say, we're both proud, unbeaten British fighters. Let's get this fight on. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great one for the fans. And personally, in my opinion, fight the night. So, yeah, let's do it. Jack Rafferty, if you'd like to respond to Henry. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's going to be a cracking fight. I can't wait. I think it's going to be... I think it'll be the fight of the night, and I'll, I'm making it fight of the night. I can uh, be sat at ringside with the five guys watching Nick Ball do his thing, winning a world title. What more do you want? When I win, I'll have a five guys with you. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, uh, what, what a brilliant British and Commonwealth title fight. Two unbeaten guys. This is, this is what it's all about, right? It is, and the uh, BC International title's on the line, which gets... The winner will get a ranking in the top ten, so that's what it's about. As you say, undefeated fighters. It's a big step up. It's a big step up for both of them, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. It's a good title fight. You know, we've got a lot of respect for for uh, James, and also Henry, as you know, he's been with us from yeah. day one, and uh, we got a, we you know you know what I think of him. And as you say, his last five fights, he's finding the power. He's settled down. He's planting his feet more, more letting his shots go. So. It's going to be an exciting fight, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, that is, uh, that's a brilliant title fight on the show. We have another... Well, we've got multiple brilliant title fights on the show. Let's come up to the top table now. We have Andrew Kane making the first defence of his British and Commonwealth Bantamweight Championships against Joshua John. Uh, and I'll start with Joshua John here, the challenger, uh, an opportunity that you've worked your whole life for. We were speaking backstage and you talked about how this is like a world title fight to you. Tell us how you're feeling about this fight. Tell us how you're feeling about this man at the other end of the table. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here. You know, it is like a world title fight for someone like me from a, a small town in Wales. Um, I'm going to treat it like a world title fight. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm really excited and I just can't wait to win, win the British on the Commonwealth title and bring it back to Wales. Well, I heard you say that you've been waiting for a call for a fight at bantamweight. You've been boxing at higher weights, but you always felt bantamweight was your weight. When this call came and it was Andrew Kane, that's the guy you've got to fight. How did you feel when you received that call? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, you got you got to you got to beat the best to be a, you got to fight the best to be a best. You get what I mean? So yeah, I'm not I'm not worried who's in front of me. Um, you know, I've always, you know, everyone wants to win the British title and the Commonwealth title. Um, it doesn't matter who's in front of me, Andrew or anyone else. It just, it just doesn't matter. The plan stays the same. What is your route to victory over Andrew Kane? Pardon? Sorry? What is your route to victory? How do you win? How do you beat Andrew Kane? Um, you know, we'll find out on the night. We're going to win. We'll just adapt to, we'll just adapt to it. Uh, whatever Andrew brings to it, we're just going to bring ten times better. We're going to come... We're going to come away with a win and bring the titles back to Wales, yeah. Well, let's bring in Andrew Kane. Um, whatever you bring, Joshua John will bring ten times better. Thoughts? Yes, yes, Dave. What's happening here? We'll see, won't we? I, I, I believe that I'm better in every aspect of the game than this fella. Normally, when I'm sitting here, I, don't, I haven't really seen much of the opponent. I've watched this fella fight Brad from my gym and uh, quite a... Quite a cagey fight, so there's not much. There's not that much you can take away from him. But uh, I can imagine he's gonna. He's not gonna. I can't imagine him to come and try and stand and fight with me. I can imagine he's gonna try and outpoint and try and run away and maneuver himself to like a, you know, like a uh, sh like snatch a win, like a little cheeky win away from me. You know what I mean? But it's not happening. Dev is there. He's gonna be lying on his back like the rest of them. Just an, an instant response, please. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be laying on my back at all. No, no one's going to hurt me. You know, I thought it's, it's impossible. I've never been hurt. Um, you, know, you, you just Lovely not going to hurt me. You know made sitting there, rocked you to your boots. Yeah, you know I, I was just a night off, you know, like like, like Brad just said as well. To get what I mean, um, you'll find out on the fifth of October. I wouldn't take the fight if I thought 
you know, if, if I thought that was my best. Do you care what I mean? I wouldn't, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting saying here. that you said that no one's hurt you before. My man there, yeah, you didn't hurt me. You were, you know you hurt you me. I wouldn't hurt me. You know, like I just said, I wouldn't be sitting here knowing I ain't got a chance against you. Do you get what I mean? Like, I know, I know I can win the fight. Obviously, I wouldn't fight be sitting here. You're going to think you can win the yeah, fight. Yeah, of course, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Deep down, though, you know that I'm going to... No, I don't. The chin and no, to rock no, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. We'll find we'll see, won't it. We? It's just not going to happen, we'll mate, at all. Yeah. Andrew, did you see anything in Joshua John's fight with your uh, your gym mate, stable mate, Brad Strand, that concerned you? Nah, it, not, you're not going to watch it. As a fighter, you're not going to watch an opponent or any fighter and be concerned if, you, if you're hard and you're in the wrong game, I believe. But there's not much I can take away from that fight. Listen, style, styles make fights, you know, and every fight's different, every night's different. So I'll just be fully prepared and I'll be ready for, for whatever the fella brings on the night and uh, I'll be bringing them belts back to ours with me. And he's boxed at higher weights and, and he's said, you know, he's never... Well, he says he, he doesn't think that you can hurt him. You, you, what do you think about that? He's sort of got to, he's got to think like that, and he's a fighter, you know, he's got, he's got to be confident, but I, I hit anyone on the chin, I can hurt them. You know, anyone, anyone at all. I've uh, even boxed that super feather, and, and hear people on that, like, uh, I can hurt anyone, Dev. I'm, I'm, I'm a different animal, and I'm, I'm training harder than ever, and, you know, we're all, we're all thriving, we're all flying the gym. The gym's right up there now, and uh, we're starting to get the recognition that we deserve, and just taking it all in, just happy to be here. Joshua, in, in your in your last fight, you uh, you stood and sort of had a bit of a trade up. You wanted to show people that you can you can have a scrap as well. Can you afford to stand and trade with Andrew Kane? Of course, you know, of course I can scrap. I'm like like you just said, I'm a fighter. We all can scrap. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, I didn't scrap against Brad, but that was just the game plan. Of course, I'm not. That's not the only the only option. Uh, you know, run away and just and just nick a win. I can stand and trade win for a full twelve rounds and not get hurt. You know, um, I'm not. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? I'm. You know, I can fight. You know, and you, we'll find out. On everyone will find out on on the fifth of October. Yeah, definitely. Make to look forward to it. Yeah, me. Come on. Okay, brilliant fight, uh, Frank. That's uh, wet the appetite a little I'm bit. I'm looking forward to it now. <laughs> God, look, he's stepped up, I think, Josh. And I know with a Andrew, I mean, you know, again, he's he's been with us for a while now, and he's done everything we asked him. In his last fight, I mean, he absolutely showed what he's all about. It'll be exciting. It will be an exciting fight. It's another British and Commonwealth title fight. You know, and these guys, uh, they're stepping up. They're stepping up, and they know they know what they got to gain. You know, the winner will go on. And it, and it may not be the end of the world for the loser, but the winner will go on. He'll go on to bigger and better things. European title maybe after that. And that's that. That's the way forward. So you just listen to these two. You know you're going to get something special. Absolutely. Brilliant. British and Commonwealth Bantamweight Championship fight. Andrew Kane against Joshua John. Well, let's talk about the main event, the WBA featherweight championship on the line. Nick Ball defending against Ronnie Rios. And I'm going to start with uh, the Ronnie Rios camp. Uh, Chris Glover here from Pro Box TV. You've got a bit of momentum, Chris. You've just crowned a new featherweight champion in Angelo Leo. He's come from, from your camp. And uh, I, guess, I guess you feel like you're looking at another one next year. Yeah, look, uh, firstly, I want to thank Frank Warren, Queensbury, on behalf of Pro Box TV, you know, for the opportunity. Um, it's a bit mad being here today, from, being from Liverpool, but being part of Ronnie's camp. Um, but, yeah, we Angela, we all had an excellent result, and, you know, you've got to back your man, and, and I, I fully expect Ronnie to come and put on a great performance. And, look, Scousers and Mexicans are very similar people. You know, they're both working-class people. They've both got models and beliefs, and they both love a fight and the roof's coming off this place on uh, October the 5th. But I, I fully back Ronnie Rios to become WBA champion of the world. What is it that Ronnie does better than Nick, kind of in, in, in your view here? And, and also, how strange is it to be from Liverpool but backing against the Liverpool man? Weird, right? It's, it's, it's mad. Like, I, I feel terrible, honestly. I feel really bad. You should be ashamed of yourself. I know. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Frank. Um, <laughs> no, no I'm, I, I'm, I want to see people, like, from around here do well. And, but one thing you can say is both of these fighters today are on merit. You know, they've both been given nothing. They've both earned everything. And that's what, that's, you know, that's what boxing's about, you know. Um, but, look, Ronnie's boxing at an, an excellent level. He, he's got 
qualities. We're not going to go and divulge your game plan here, but he's got qualities that I believe are different to what Nick's seen before. And, um, you know, it's it's why it makes this fight so good. And that's why people are going to tune in, not just in the UK, but all over the world. People want to watch this fight. And I think those abilities are, is what is going to make this fight interesting on October the 5th. Well, let's hear from Frank. Um, of course, Chris there, he, you know, he should be ashamed of himself, as, as you say. But um, a, a brilliant fight. And stylistically, this is just fireworks, isn't it, Nick Ball, Ronnie Rios? It is, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, they've well, obviously... Uh, Nick's last two fights speak for himself. He's uh, sitting here undefeated. He's got the belt, and this is a homecoming for him. And, uh, you know, with Ronnie, you know, he's, he's fought at the highest level. He's challenged a couple of times for the title. He's got the experience. Well, he's had 38 fights. They've nearly doubled the amount of fights that, um, that uh, Nick's had. Having said that, you know, like I said at the start of this, I think, I think Nick is one of the, if not the most exciting fights that they're watching in the world. It's just all action. You watch him fight, it's all action. And Ronnie's going to have to do all the things that Chris is saying, and I'm sure Ronnie's going to say as well, he's going to have to do. He's going to have to bring his best game plan. His A game's going to have to be there, because if it's not, it'll end very quickly. So he's got to be at his best, because he's in with the best. There's no doubt about it. Ronnie Rios, the challenger. Um opportunity that you've been waiting for, opportunity that you came back to boxing for to become world champion. What does this mean to you, this night coming up, October the 5th? It means everything to me, you know? Uh, I want to become a world champion since I was 13, and uh, 21 years later, the opportunity is here yet again. But I think this, is, this has an ex extra incentive for me because I'm literally in his backyard. I believe he lives about a couple minutes from here. So this is, this is, in my opinion, this is the way a fighter should try and take the world title, by coming to the champion's backyard and trying to take that title. So this, you know, I, um, this is very exciting, and this is what we work hard for. This is what keeps me up at night in a good way. Do you feel like all the pressure's on Nick in this, as you say, lives a couple of minutes away, first defense, it's literally called the Nick Ball homecoming. Do you feel like all the, all the pressure's on him? No, not at all. I know he's going to come in and look, the reason why I, I, I'm a fan of Nick Ball is because he looks like a hard-working person. He looks like he, he, he goes out there, he works his ass off, excuse my language, he works his butt off, and I'm the same way too. He, you know, he doesn't come from money, he doesn't do anything, so he's from a hard-working class. And um, I think October 5th, we're going to possibly put a potential fight of the year on October 5th. Well, let's bring in the champion. Um, Nick, you have been on the undercard of Tyson Fury. You have been on the undercard of Anthony Joshua. Now it's your time. Now you're the champion. You're the main event in <coughs> Liverpool. It's a good time to be Nick Ball. Yeah, definitely. It feels good here. It feels good to be back, especially in Liverpool, as a world champion, yeah, in my home city. You know, thanks to Frank for bringing it back, um, bringing it back to Liverpool. Yeah, he didn't have to, so... Yeah, I appreciate it, and uh, it's going to be a special night. And, and Ronnie Reels agrees that it will be a special night. What, what do you uh, what do you make of your opponent? He's coming into this with, uh, you know, he's been dreaming about taking that belt for, for a while. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Um, everyone has dreams of becoming a world champion, and this is his chance, you know. He's, he's coming in, he's coming over to try and take what I've worked so hard for my whole career, um, you know, take away from me, and... You know, I'm going to show him that's not the case, and he's definitely uh, not coming the way I'm coming, so it's going to be exciting. You've been referred to today as the best featherweight in the world, as the most exciting to watch fighter in the world as well. Do you agree with, with that, Nick? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, my last two fights have been with um, proper world champions, and you know what happened in the first one. You know, every, everyone knows you, you should have won that one. That was a bad decision, but, you know... You move on, don't you? And Frank got me another opportunity for another world title, so I've got that one. And here I am today fighting in um, Liverpool, yeah, as, as a world champion, um, defending in no better place. So looking forward to it. What does this fight mean to you? Because uh, we, we was talking earlier about the your last kind of run of fights. Isaac Dogbay was kind of the, the step up to the next level. 
Then you had back-to-back -back world title fights against someone called Ray. Uh, what about this one now in Liverpool, coming home? What, what does this mean to Nick Ball? It means everything to me, because obviously this is where I grew up. You know, this is where I started off on the, on the small old shows, like I, like I told you before, selling the tickets in nightclubs, sports centres. So, you know, my last two fights, have, they've been out in Saudi. That, um, that's an unbelievable experience as well, but not many people can come to that, so it's good that it's back home in Liverpool and um, all them people who have been supporting me since day one, they can come, come out and uh, support me and, um, yeah, and watch. And to be honest, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I am today without them, so I appreciate it. What do you do better than Ronnie Rios? I don't really look look into that too much, to be honest. What, what I do better than my opponents, this and that. I just focus on myself, you know, be the best version I can be myself and mainly listening to the to, to the people around me in the gym every day. Paul and Ant, you know, we're learning every day in our gym, you know, and all the lads as well, we're, we're, we're bouncing off each other in the gym. So just mainly focusing on myself and the opponents, they're going to change every fight, aren't they? So I don't really look too deep into... What I do better than this this opponent, he's just another opponent in my way, and thinks that he's going to take what I've worked so hard for me, my whole life, my whole career, and you know that's not going to be the case. Ronnie, let me bring you back in here. I mean, uh, have you? Do you feel like you've ever boxed anyone like Nick Ball? Somebody puts that much pressure? No, I don't think so. This is the first for me. You know, I expected that from a previous opponent, Negrete, um, but not to this, not to this level. So how do you deal with that level of pressure? Because yeah, I, I agree. That's that's his. That's one of Nick Ball's main things. Is just constant, relentless pressure. He stands up in between rounds as well. He doesn't stop coming. How do you deal with that? You know, there's a few ways. Uh, you can either move around or uh, or you can come forward. There's two different ways. Uh, but you know, October fifth. October fifth would be would be my way to show the statement. You know, and I also want to say what a pleasure it is to be up here with Frank Warren. You know. I, so ever since I was a little kid, I used to read the, the stories about how I used to manage one of my favorite fighters, Ricky Hatton. So to actually share the same table with you means a lot. Right. Nice words, nice words. But yeah, as as a uh, as Frank, what would you, do you want to say? You're welcome. Or? More than welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, more than welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure. It's, it's, it's going to, you know, we we we're really pleased Ronnie's here and. Uh, we know, we know this is going to be a good fight again. I mean, this is a fabulous card. This, th these guys will always give everything they've got because so much is at stake. You know, and boxing at the moment is in such a good place. Um, you know, everywhere, every month there's great shows going on and this is another great show involving great fighters and uh, they all have a chance to do better, you know, better for themselves in their lives, move forward. And, and you've got guys here who want it. Yeah, they want to fight. Not just coming to make up the numbers. And I know, I know, Ronnie, you're going to get the best Ronnie on the night. And, and as I said earlier, you'll have to be the best Ronnie. Ronnie, just uh, just quickly, this is your uh, third shot at a world title. Why are you going to get it done this time? Whatever I have to, you know. I know Nick's going to come to fight, and vice versa. I'm not here just for the, a quick payday. I'm here to actually try and take that title from him. That's why I'm here. You know, I just want everybody to know I didn't just obviously say yes to get a quick payday and go back home. I'm here to try to win that world title and give the five fans whatever they want. They, they came to see that night. Have you seen weaknesses in Nick Bull? Sorry? Have you seen weaknesses in Nick Bull? Uh, no, not lately. I've been watching tape already for, for a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, but if you don't see any weakness, you got to go out there and you have to make weakness. What's your prediction for fight night, Ronnie? Whatever I have to do to walk away with that belt is my prediction. And Nick, final word to you, champ. He's looking to come and take that belt off of you. What is your prediction for fight night, October the 5th? Same again from me, yeah. All, all action performance. And I feel like this one's going to be even more so with, the, with where it is. And, you know, the people getting behind me in, in Liverpool defending me um, we, we will title what I've worked so hard for to, to, to get. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's going to be a special night. Special night. Thank you, Nick. Uh, final word to yourself, Frank. Uh, of, of course, just tickets are on sale via Ticket Quarter tomorrow. And Frank, look at this. This is a, look, a magnificent show. And there's show. a couple not here. 
Oh, we've got um, Jadia... Jada Herrera. Herrera's not That's here. Tough, right? Yeah, he's not here. And we've got... Uh, yeah, it's, it, it was a, right, again, he's a sensational fighter. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be a fabulous night of boxing, and, uh, and I'm delighted that we'll be able to do it. And it's been up through all these guys' hard work, not, not myself as a problem, I'm about the fighters and their managers and their trainers who work very hard to get, get this going, and we're going to make it a success story in Liverpool. That's what this is about. This is about, you know, good fights. It's about building and building, so we're doing this on a regular basis. Because there's always been a great market here. There's always been, you know, a massive fight, fight town, or city, I should say. And, uh, and this, is the, this is the start. And it couldn't get any better than this for the first one for, for such a while now. I mean, this is a phenomenal card with phenomenal fighters. And you're gonna, there's some other world champions sitting here in the making. So I'm delighted, and uh, you know, be there on the fifth. Don't be at, don't be out of it. It's going to be such a good atmosphere. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's going to be alive. It's going to be the place will be jumping. <clears throat> the place will be jumping October the fifth. Make sure you are there. Get your tickets on sale tomorrow via Ticket Quarter. Liverpool has a new hero of boxing. His name is Nick Ball. He's a mini Mike Tyson. The wrecking ball is coming home and defending against Ronnie Rios. A brilliant undercard as well. Stick with us. We're going to do a couple of face-offs here and uh, stay with us on the stream. Thank you. Well done. It's funny, it's funny because like I've always uh you know, we always we always interact on social yeah, media, man, but it's yeah. different when it's when you first, meet someone, yeah. yeah. I'm a different person when you meet me. Yeah, thank you. He's a blue now. He's a blue now, yeah, he's an Amazonian, yeah. Well yeah, well should we get him? How should we look at him? Right, son. Oh, I bust it with that piss in there. <laughs> Good. Um, you right? You're okay? Good man. going at last. Um, 
Yeah. Good win on Saturday. Yeah, I know, right? I thought he was going. Good. You're right, you can call me anything you need. Yeah, no problem. You're right, is Joe not here? You got your new car? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, David. Not this one. Yeah, sure. Good, yeah. That way first. Face off. Go on, Raptors, lad. Go on, up there. Go on, guys. <laughs> That'll do you. Thanks, fellas. Be good. There you go. You okay, man? Go on. Yeah. Come on, Tiger. <laughs> Good. Thanks, fellas. Cheers, Jeff. Thanks, one. Too much. Go and run. All good? Thanks, off, fellas. How do you, fellas? Good pleasure.